This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. And today I wanted to talk about a fax machine executive who's been bashing email lately. This is Neil Kashkari, president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis. And surprise, surprise, this particular central banker is skeptical of Bitcoin as a currency. In this clip, which I encourage you to watch, it's pretty funny. Kashkari asks a room full of suits whether they've ever bought anything like a sandwich using Bitcoin. And you won't be too surprised to hear that a room full of suits listening to Neil Kashkari have not. I like this tweet from Bill Miller. Has anybody ever bought a book on the internet? Basically saying this is the internet equivalent, what Neil Kashkari is saying, bookstore owner in 1998, talking about Amazon. And when you're investing, you need to skate to where the puck is going, not to where the puck is. Politicians and central bankers are usually not aware of what's coming down the pike. But I thought it was interesting that Kashkari was talking about the problems with buying a sandwich using Bitcoin because there's also been a lot of problems buying sandwiches using US dollars. A Subway sandwich when the chain first opened, when the original store first opened, cost something between 49 cents and 69 cents. As this article from MASH points out, if there's been so much inflation since then, obviously now a six inch or foot long sub is a lot more than that, probably something like nine, 10, $12, depending where you live. And this is one reason that in Pakistan, Subway has launched their first three inch sandwich to tackle inflation. This is what we call shrinkflation. So it's not just higher prices for sandwiches, you also get less quality, even if it looks the same on the outside. This is what's called shrinkflation. For example, the classic example is your toothpaste used to come in a six ounce tube and now it's a five ounce tube for the same price or maybe even for a greater price. And we see this with Subway sandwiches as well. Puffy bread with extra air bubbles, lower quality ingredients, especially the deli meats over the years, flavor enhancers, extra sugar, fillers, all these things to make up for the fact that buying real good ingredients to put in a sandwich like this would be incredibly expensive thanks to central bankers like Neil Kashkari. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to hit the subscribe and like buttons, maybe leave a comment as well. So I would ask Neil Kashkari, where does all this inflation come from? Because it's not just sandwich inflation, it's actually everywhere. And I have some reasons to think that Neil should know the answer to this question. The famous 60 Minutes interview in 2020 and early 2020, when Neil Kashkari told 60 Minutes that there's an infinite amount of cash at the Federal Reserve and money printer could go burr. This is one reason that sandwiches keep going up in price. It's because this particular currency that the Federal Reserve is in charge of managing, they haven't done a great job because when the Fed was founded in 1913, $1 had the purchasing power uh, of today's equivalent roughly of $26. This isn't, it hasn't even been updated for 21, 2021 and 2022 and 2023. So the inflation, in other words, the melting ice cube that the US dollar is has been much, much worse. And this is a direct result of the money printers and central bankers like Neil Kashkari. In that clip, Neil Kashkari goes on to say, if you want to spend your money buying Beanie Babies or Pez dispensers or Bitcoin, knock yourself out. And he gets a little chuckle from the host and from the audience. I thought that was funny, Neil, though, because OFAC, the Treasury Department, the Department of Energy, and other federal agencies don't seem too worried about Beanie Babies or Pez dispensers, but they do behave as if they're quite threatened by Bitcoin, at least some of these agencies do. I would just say in this interview, if you watch it, it's really worth watching Neil, the interviewer, the audience come across, they come across as so smug, so patronizing, so dunning, Kruger. Neil really is the big dumb dinosaur laughing at the little mammals, not knowing what's coming for him. He's the dumb fax machine CEO who has no idea what's coming down the pike for him. I don't think Kashkari is a quote unquote evil central banker. I think he's just a useful idiot with a job in the big money factory. And yet he's somehow blissfully unaware of the history of sound money, the history of hard money. He's not intellectually curious enough to even once investigate what money is from a first principles basis, even though he works in the big old money factory. And as a side result of this, what he's doing with his public service, he and the other central bankers, is they're causing untold damage to millions of lives as the inflation caused directly by their institutions, the central banks, ravage, especially the working and middle classes. The only good thing actually that Neil has done is unintentionally given us a financial model that we can use to model Bitcoin's fair value and its price target. And it's quite encouraging when you look at it because Neil says there's an infinite amount of cash at the Federal Reserve. This is another way of actually saying that the US dollar is guaranteed to go to zero. By contrast, there are only 21 million Bitcoin. And you can see this is why Bitcoin's price might go a lot higher from here 
when you get an asset that has only 21 million big units converging, uh, trying to absorb the value of an infinite amount of fiat. So there's an infinite amount of cash at the Federal Reserve. Bitcoin trading at 44,700 is not exactly trading close to infinity. By the way, Neil, you can actually use Bitcoin to buy lots of things worldwide. I use Bitcoin to buy things. So the future is already here, just not evenly distributed. I think Neil should maybe visit a place like Bitcoin Jungle in Costa Rica. Here's a great clip from the Bitcoin Jungle Twitter account showing Paul Saladino going around buying all these fresh fruits and vegetables using uh, using the Lightning Network and using Bitcoin. Looks like a really fun place to visit. I look forward to visiting in the future. There's a postscript to this as well. We used to hear this warning all the time. I heard it for years and years and years. Bitcoin is a side effect of loose Fed monetary policy and just the fact that they were employing ZERP, zero interest rate policy. And this theory was that once the Fed started to raise interest rates, that Bitcoin would go to zero. And yet here we are, surprisingly, or not surprisingly, according to your perspective, with Fed funds, short-term interest rates at 5.25%, and the Fed is staying higher for longer. In other words, they're expecting to try to keep it up here if they can, without the whole banking system and the US government blowing up. But here we are with much, much higher interest rates, certainly as far away from the zero bound as they've been for many years. Years, and yet Bitcoin is still sitting comfortably at 44,700. So this particular ZERP theory perhaps needs to be revised. And I would say that $44,700 per coin is pretty expensive for a pet rock or Beanie Baby or Pez dispenser. So I'd say to Neil, maybe you're missing something. The markets are assigning a $900 billion value to this Bitcoin thing and it doesn't seem to be going away. As we spoke about in a previous video, even the, the Economist, the magazine, is beginning to finally understand this after having been a, an enemy of Bitcoin really since the beginning. They had this uh, cover article, Bitcoin is basically a dirty little cockroach, which means that you can't do anything to stop it. This was the Economist throwing in the towel, introducing the cockroach theory of crypto. Well, crypto doesn't really stick around. Lots of things blow up. Bitcoin is the thing that sticks around, and Bitcoin is the thing that you put in your title of your article as well. So even The Economist understands that this Bitcoin thing is not going away. If Bitcoin is indeed like a cockroach, I'd say it's it's actually not a bad idea to store your savings and your retirement savings in an asset that cannot be stopped or destroyed as The Economist seems to be intimating here. In fact, that almost sounds like a good commercial for it. I'd love to see a Super Bowl commercial with Larry Fink surrounded by cockroaches as an ad for Bitcoin. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.